What's up guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to install a fully fledged web server for your iPod Touch 4th generation. This is fully fledged meaning it can run programs such as WordPress, Joomla, or any other type of CMS. The reason why this tutorial is on a 4th generation iPod Touch, which is a very old device right now, is because you can find these very cheap on eBay or anywhere which gives you your very own web server without actually having a real server. So you could be running a full-fledged website with a $20 product, presumably. So in this tutorial, we're going to start out with a fresh iPod Touch 4th generation, which I am going to currently restore. Alright, so the restore is now finished, and I suggest that you guys start from a fresh slate also because this install will go a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and set this iPod up. Connect to the network. We can enable location services, set up new. Okay, so our device does need to be jailbroken on the latest 6.1.6 .6 firmware for the iPod Touch 4th generation. So if you are already jailbroken, go ahead and click on the screen to skip ahead. If you are not though, we are going to be using PO6 Pwn Jailbreak, which is a one-click, one-step solution to jailbreaking this device. There's a link in the description to the program. Make sure your device is on and unlocked. And then go ahead and open up the program and push jailbreak. During the jailbreak process, make sure to keep your iPod unlocked after it reboots and also make sure iTunes is closed the whole time on your computer and close it if it pops up. So it just rebooted the device and now it's going to start the jailbreak. Alright, so the device has rebooted and as we can see the jailbreak has completed. So you can go ahead and unplug your iPod. Open up Cydia. And wait until the file system is done preparing. Once that completes, unlock the iPod and go back into Cydia. Make sure you select Hacker on this tab. If an update page doesn't automatically come up, go to Changes and push on Refresh. And make sure you push Upgrade Essential. We do not want to do the complete upgrade at the moment. After that is completed, restart the springboard. Go ahead and go back into Cydia. 
after it is completely finished loading, we're going to need to add a source. So go to the Sources tab and hit Edit, Add. And you're going to add uh, this URL that I have in the description. iOS-webstack.tk slash Cydia. Go ahead and click Add Source. Now that we have the correct repository, go ahead and go into that repository, go to All Packages, and for this old iPod, we're going to need a special package called iOS-webstack-patcher. And this is going to make it able to install the later package with the web server and PHP and MySQL. So go ahead and install this. After the quick install, we're going to go back to the same repository and install the package right above it called iOS-LightTTPD-PHPMySQL. And this is our main package that we need. Alright, it is completed installing. It did take a few times. If you get any errors during the download or install, I would recommend plugging in the device uh, as I have. And also, if you continue getting errors, you can re-add the repository after refreshing it. However, you should not get errors. So we know that it has successfully installed if it installs with no errors and also if this shows up in settings right down here. And make sure both of those are on and we can connect to the web server through Safari by going to http colon forward slash forward slash local host And as you can see, we are on its own web server right now. And we can even access it on a different computer. So we're going to get its local IP address right here. And there it is, dot .12. So when we come over to our computer, as you can see, we are connected to dot .12. And we have the exact same page as we did on the iPod. So guys, that is how to set up a fully-fledged web server on your iPod Touch 4th generation. This does work on the newer devices. However, I'm showing you how to do it on an old device like this. For as I explained previously, if you have one of these laying around, or if somebody else does, or if they're cheap online, you get a very inexpensive web server that you can use plugged in. I am not going to do the WordPress or Joomla installation in this video. However, if you guys are interested in either of those videos, make sure to let me know and I will make sure to create some tutorials for you guys. Thanks for watching.